Hi, everybody. Hi, hi. It's so good to see everybody. Katie, Jill, Lucinda, Stacia, Colleen, Regina's here. Hope he makes things is here. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. It's so good to see you. It's so, so good to see you. It is really weird in this room. The echo is weird. The lighting is weird. It is all kinds of empty. There are only a handful of beads that are actually not in a box. It's weird. I'm just saying. It's weird. Does it look weird to you? Because it certainly feels weird to me. And my dogs are not, not happy with this because though they can still get to all their toys, it's like there's just like this very, very, very thin words, very thin little pathway for them to get from one side of the desk to the other. They just don't, they just don't like it at all. They are not happy. <laughs> so they're literally like right here. The closer they can be to me, the further away they can be from the boxes. I think that's kind of what their logic is. I'm not real sure. I mean, do we even understand dog logic? Who knows? Who knows? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so you guys, yeah, so much empty. So, so empty. There's, um, there's hope in that though, right? I mean, that means that the next time we get together on a Tuesday at 1 p.m., you're going to be seeing me in a totally different place, right? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, so yeah, in the meantime, we're just going to, we're working with bare bones, bare bones. I literally have my work bag. I never use my work bag and my work bag is out. That's what I'm working out of. So it's pretty crazy. Um, so let's talk. Let's talk a little bit because I do have things to tell you guys. I've got some updates to give you guys and um, just some little housekeeping notes and things that you might want to um, write down or set reminders for or just commit to memory if you want to. Um, so first and foremost, this is my last 1 p.m. live on a Tuesday until I get moved. Okay, so um, unless you are a hardwired member, I will be seeing the hard wires today at 430. So I will see all of you guys one more time. But if you're not part of the hardwired group, this will be the last time that you see me here in these surroundings. Um, I will be off for the remainder of this week. The next time you see me will be April 5th. I know that's a long time feels like it feels like forever for me um but i know that it's necessary in order for me to get moved from one place to another place and then not just moved but then unpacked enough so that i can conduct business right doesn't do me any good to get there and then go live if i can't show you projects and i can't make things so um it's going to be necessary so just know right today is the last day you'll see me until april 5th please don't forget about me <laughs> Please don't go find some other redhead to watch. <laughs> I promise I'm coming back. Okay. Um, and that is the same for the hardwired group as well. We'll talk about that later in the hardwired group. Um, but it affects not only these lives, but it is also going to affect shipping. So that being said, if you've got your eye on something, if you want one of this new silver silk flat mesh kits that came out, um, if you want any of the kits from the shop from last week or just whatever is in the shop, um, now is the time to make those purchases because shipping will also uh, stop for that amount of time. So if you purchase something after the 17th, that's Thursday, okay? If you make a purchase after Thursday, so you've got today, tomorrow, and Thursday to make your purchases and then still get shipped to you quickly. However, if you purchase after Thursday, meaning Friday forward, nothing will ship until April 5th. I'll try to get to the post office between there because that is really a long time. I'll try to get to the post office, but I'll be honest with you. I don't even know where the new post office is where it's not a new post office. I don't know where the post office is in, in relation to my new place, whole different city. So I don't know where that post office is going to be. Um, and as soon as I can find it, I'll get things shipped to you. Um, so just know uh, that I appreciate your patience. So if you're, if, again, just, I know I've said it 15 times. I'm going to say it 15 more. If you make a purchase after Thursday, it will not ship until April. Okay. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, oh, thank you, Phyllis. Phyllis said, 
because I have tried to watch others. I have tried others to watch. No one is as wonderful as you. I don't think that's true, but I'll take that all day. <laughs> I appreciate that so, so much. I really, really appreciate it. That's like a serious fear of mine though. Like, and I think that's true for any of the designers. When you take some time off, whether you're going on vacation or whether you're making a life change or whatever, if you're gone for more than about a week, a week and a half, you're really worried that people are going to forget about you and fill up their time with something else, someone else, some other something. And then when you come back, you don't have 300 people in your life anymore. You only have 10. So it's a, it's a real concern. Um, but I'm hoping that this community that I have built, um, has, has, we're strong enough, right? We're strong enough. We'll get back together. It's no big deal. I also plan on doing a couple of just like impromptu lives just to be like, Hey, here I am. This is sort of the new place. Uh, things like that where we won't be doing projects, but I'll just be ch checking in with you guys. Okay. So yeah. Um, let's see, we've got bargain bead box. So this is literally the last bit of beads. I think Sam's box is in my mailbox like right now. So I've got the Sam box. I don't even think I'm going to open it until I get moved. In fact, I think that's going to be the present to myself. I think I'm going to wait to open it until I get into the new place and then open it and it will be like my beady present from Sam. Um, but bargain bead box I do have. So I have the March bargain bead box for those of you who um, have the March box. I hope that I inspire you with today's project. We're doing a simple project, but it's a stunner. It's a stunner. Like this, this is a multi-strand necklace that you can layer to, you can add to, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff to if you want to, to make it even more. We're going to do a little bit of stringing. We're going to do a little bit of simple looping. I've now decided that's a technical term, simple looping. <laughs> but the results are gorgeous, right? And that's what we want. We want super easy technique, but results that are like, wow, that's what this is. Um, let's see. Uh, anything else I need to tell you before we get started with today's project? I don't think so. I think um, uh, Nicole can drop and calling can as well. Nicole's already done it. The code for Bargain Bead Box. So if you use my code SED2, you get $2 off your first box if you are not subscribed to Bargain Bead Box. I love Bargain Bead Box. That one and Sam's box are my two favorite boxes to get. They're on two totally different ends of the spectrum as far as I'm concerned. Um, and so there is a place for both of them in the beady world. Uh, the Bargain Bead Box is absolutely a bargain. It is priced under $20. And once a month, they put together a curated box of goodies for you. And it always has a theme. They always include a monthly coupon that you can use. I use the coupon every single month. I make huge purchases from this place. Um, and part of the reason that I do that is because once you're subscribed to the Bargain Bead Box, then you have access to their sister site, which is Bead Box Bargains. Just rearrange the words. Um, and you have access exclusive to their shopping site where you can repurchase not only the things that are included in their monthly shipment, but they have a whole selection. They have a whole warehouse full of goodies and the inventory changes every day. So they're always adding new things. Um, they always have really good sales that are going on. You can get gemstones for next to nothing. And I'm not, they're not like the top best gemstones in the entire world. But I got to tell you, they are still good quality. And if you need to order things in bulk, or you just need to order, maybe not in bulk like I do, but if you want to order lots of something, like maybe you need six strands of, of neon appetite, that's the place to do it because it's affordable. It is most definitely a place to shop for those of us who do not have a business license, who do not have tax exempt, um, but still want to shop at wholesale prices. That's what makes Bargain Bead Box and Bead Box Bargains so phenomenal. Not only that, but it is a small business and I'm all about the small business because I too am a small business. I know what it takes to do that day in and day out. Their customer service is top notch. These people, they care about their customers, they care about their products, and they're going to do whatever it takes. Uh, to make you happy. So if there is something wrong, don't hesitate to reach out to them because they will fix it right away. Not only that, they ship really, really fast. Um, so I can't, I can't talk 
enough about the bargain bead box people. I, um, I hope to actually physically meet them <laughs> in person one day um, just so that I can properly thank them because they really have helped me to run my business um, in that they can supply things to me at a, at a cost that is affordable for me. Um, all right. So without further ado, I'm going to get right down to it. Okay. So let's do this. Let's do this. Change the camera here. Get a look at all those boxes back there. <laughs> you can see the chaos in this room. All right. So uh, the bargain bead box this month, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going through the bag, but I do want to show you, just kind of give you a, um, give you a little, a quick run through of what they've got. And I also want to scroll back here make sure. Oh, Naomi says I'm missing the Jessica rabbit in the background already. She'll be, she'll be back. She'll be back. You know I can't go anywhere without her. Wanda, hiya. How are you? Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick run through of this. Not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. And I also want to tell you that there are beads missing because they're part of the project. So this isn't everything. Okay. So blue is definitely the theme here. Uh, I can't remember what the exact theme is. It's on the paper, but that's since been packed up. So all right, check these out. These make me happy. These are sort of, they look like pony beads, but they're not. They have a small hole like a regular bead. I've actually ordered these in a ton of colors because stacking the colors together and putting them in necklaces and bracelets, this, this uh, shape of bead is really big for spring and summer this year. So making some very fun kind of whimsical, like nostalgic designs, right? Because they look like a pony bead. So it very much gives you like that, you know, middle school, high school jewelry kind of feeling. And you can take that into grown up territory with these beads that are actual beads. They're not, they're not plastic with a big hole. Love these. You can get these in a bunch of different colors on their site. Uh, we've got some Amazonite, which is always a favorite of mine just because it has so much personality and adds such a beautiful kind of natural feel to anything that you add it to. Some of these guys, also a crowd pleaser. I believe these are Magnus. I wish I hadn't packed the paper. I apologize for that. I, I, but I did. I packed the paper with all my paperwork. So I don't know for sure what any of this stuff is. <laughs> I just know it's it's beautiful and it's blue. I believe these are blue quartz. I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, but you guys can correct me if I'm wrong because some of you out there have the have the paper, whereas I don't. These little blue bicones, we're going to be using these, a few of these in our project today. I love their bicone selection. They always have a great uh, variety of colors and sizes and finishes on their bicones. And a lot of times the bicones will be like 99 cents a strand, which is awesome because it means you can get a ton of them. So love that. Another beautiful blue. And this one has that shimmery finish to it. it's not quite a hundred percent a b but it does have that shift of like the purple and the green in there it's a beautiful pendant this one had two pendants that i absolutely loved so there was this one and then there was this one and i couldn't decide which one i wanted to use in my design so i picked this one but this one would work as well so love that these are super cool I love that these have a large hole because these are going to fit on leather and it's always a treasure to me to find a really cool shaped bead that will fit onto some thicker stringing material because they, they tend to be a little bit more expensive. These are awesome. So these look like little clouds. Originally when I was designing this piece for today, I had these in, um, I had these in the design and then I took them out because... <laughs> For selfish reasons, actually, I actually want to make something for myself with these. So I don't know officially what these are called, but they look like clouds to me. And I think that's why I think that's why they were included, because they do look like clouds. They have that beautiful AB finish on one side. So they're like either way that you look at them. They're awesome. I just love them. I love them, love them, love them. These are also beautiful. I love the facets on these. 
There's some little tiny blue. There's a lot more of these, but I have these pulled for the design that we're going to do. And then the metal components for this month was copper and not just copper, but like antique copper, which is my favorite version of copper because regular copper, I tend to, my fingers tend to turn it really quickly. Whereas antique copper, um, I don't seem to have the same chemical reaction on it as I do with just regular copper. So look at those little birds. They're so cute. So there are some birds missing because I have some birds in the design as well. There are bead caps. Some of these are missing because I'm using them as well. I gotta tell you, one of my favorite things to do with bead box bargains um, is I'll go order all my metal components from them. So I do, I have a combination of metal components in my arsenal. So I use uh, none design, I use Tierra cast, and then I get things like bead caps from bargain bead box. Uh, because they're affordable and I can buy them in bulk. So if you need like to, to stock up on your metal supplies, uh, bead box bargains is a great place to do that. They have lots of like you can see here, there are toggles. So they have clasps, they have charms, they have chain, they have findings. So if you're looking to stock up, it's definitely a, a great place to do that. There's some more little birds. Look at those ones, they're cute. Love them. So this is definitely like spring, uh, flight, air, sky. I, those are the vibes I'm getting here. And I, th I think it's probably pretty close to what the theme was. I, I don't know, I, I, that paper. Who knows? Okay, so this is what I haven't used. The rest of what's included in this month is over on my other bead mat. We're going to use it to put together a design. So let's do that, shall we? There was some chain included. There were lots of other things included. So don't think that that's all that there was. I'm, I'm about to show you what was, what else there was included. Okay, let's move this mat and bring this mat down. Okay, so just to give you like a little sneaky peeky, these were my favorite beads in the entire box. So these are my uh, my feature bead, if you will. They're just a glass bead, but they have like, they're blue, they're green. They just have that iridescent yumminess to them. They also have like a flash of purple and pink, depending on how the light hits. And you see that, how it flashes from like pinky purple. They're so beautiful. So I wanted to feature these. I also wanted to feature these guys. So these little connectors, though they're not connected together when you get them, I created a chain out of them. We're going to, we're going to make the chain a little bit longer. Um, but you could use these in a variety of ways, right? You, let me just show you the individual ones. So it's four little hearts. There's a, a loop at the top, a loop at the bottom. Now you could use them as, um, you know, a charm in between a design. You can turn them sideways and use them as a component in an earring. You can actually use them as a multi-strand design because you can, you can thread through the hearts themselves. You can wire wrap to them. There are a lot of possibilities with this little component. Again, another great thing that you can buy from them um, and, and stock up on if you need little metal components. So there were a ton of these. We're going to turn them into chain like you just saw a few minutes ago. Um, that's going to be one of the strands of our design. There's also some chain included. I'm going to be using the chain as my, um, my length for the necklace. And we're going to do a multi-strand design. So we're doing three strands with these little components that were also included. So you see it's a three to one component. So there, there's the uh, ability to have three strands on one side and one strand from the other. So you could use these for chandelier earrings if you wanted to. You could use these as bracelet components, um, but I'm going to use it as a, a, a connection for three strands for a necklace that's going to come into one strand. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the stringing section of this. So where this, where we come to the single strand, okay, we're going to go ahead and string up that single strand. We're going to do that on both sides and we're going to incorporate some of those little birds some of our little bicones, cones and then of course some of these gorgeous big glass beads here okay and we're going to be using some 19 strand satin copper beetle on bead string and wire this is one of my favorites look at the color of that it's per it's like 
it was just made. It was just made for these these kinds of designs with regular copper and antique copper. This bead string and wire matches. It it's the perfect like middle ground. Really, really love it. Plus the fact that it's gorgeous. So if you wanted to do an exposed wire project where the wire is showing, it really is beautiful. So I'm using the 0.46 millimeter. That's gonna uh you're gonna use a number one crimp tube or a number, or I'm sorry, crimp bead or a number two crimp tube. I have some little number two beetle on crimp tubes for this. You guys know I prefer the tubes over the beads just because I have a little bit more surface area. Also have a couple of uh, wire guardians in uh, antique copper as well. So let's get started. Okay, you're not going to need a lot of bead string wire for these short little pieces. Maybe six inches. That's probably overkill. Um, I'm going to dump out my Ooh, Wanda says it looks like they're getting ready for an Easter sale over at Beadbox Bargains. That's always good news. I just got a huge shipment from them, so maybe I'll be getting another huge shipment from them. <laughs> like, I spend an excessive amount of money with them, but it's, I love them. I really, really love them. Between them and Sam and Danielle, like, I have the best selection of beads ever. All right, so I'm going to thread on my wire guardian to the end. So I thread on my, my crimp tube. Now I'm threading on my wire guardian. I'm going to take my bead stringing wire. I'm going to go up through the wire guardian and then down through the wire guardian, but not through the crimp tube just yet because I want to go ahead and thread this directly to my component. Okay, so don't go through your tube or your bead just yet. Go ahead and take that bead stringing wire and thread the end of it through the top of your component and then it will drop down into the wire guardian okay then go ahead and take that tail of the wire and thread it through your crimp tube or your crimp bead depending on what you're using okay now we're going to crimp so we want to be sure that our wires are not crossing inside that crimp tube that they are running parallel inside there and we are going to use our crimper tool so we're going to put that crimp into the back notch of the crimper tool Give it a squeeze. That's going to further separate those wires within the crimp tube so that they are not touching. And then we're going to turn that sideways and put it into the front notch of our crimper tool and give it a squeeze. That just makes it a little bit more tidy and compact. Okay, so now I'm going to trim off the excess bead stringing wire. Now, if you want to add a crimp cover here, you can. I don't have one in um, this copper, so I'm just going to leave it like it is. It's just a tiny little bead. Nobody's going to notice it anyway. It just kind of depends or disappears rather into the design, so I'm just going to leave it, okay? All right, so I'm going to thread on on each side three of these big, beautiful um, glass beads, but I'm going to put bead caps in between them so that we have those pops of metal. So I'm going to thread on a bead cap, one of our glass beads, a bead cap to cap that off. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm going to thread on another bead cap. I'm going to thread on another bead and another bead cap. See how those sit together? I'm going to do one more. And one more of the glass beads and a bead cap. All right, now I'm going to use some of these little birds. I just can't not. <laughs> so I've pulled out four of the little birds and we're going to put the birds in between jump ring. Or I'm sorry, jump rings. What? Bicones. <laughs> just like that. So I'm going to thread on one of those little sky blue bicones. I'm going to thread on a little bird. Okay, I'm going to thread on another bicone, another little bird, and another bicone. So the cool thing about the birds, they add visual interest to the design because they're such a strange shape from far away. You're like, what is that? And then you get up close to the design. You're like, oh my gosh, it's a bird. How cute is that? But they spin around, right? They're not going to sit stable. They're going to spin around. And so sometimes they're going to be facing the same way. Sometimes they're going to be facing opposite ways. Like I, um, I, sorry, there was a message that just popped up. <laughs> 
I love I love the addition of them and the movement that they give, right? They're just they're just so cute. So so cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna crimp this side. Okay, so we're finished with that little strand. It's gonna be finished off with chain, but we want to go ahead and finish it off all together, all all the, all the way down to the crimp. So another crimp tube, and we're gonna do a wire guardian. Okay, so I'm going to bring that down. Now you can thread this this wire through a bead if you want to, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna leave it just like that, and I'm gonna bring in my crimper tool and crimp. Do want to make sure that I've pulled out all the slack, so there's not any big gaps anywhere between my beads. Place that into the back notch of your crimper. Give it a squeeze. Turn it sideways. Put it into the front of the crimper tool and squeeze, and then we're going to trim off the excess. So we're just gonna repeat this little process. You're gonna see a lot of repetition in today's project. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Look how pretty that is. So that's gonna be the top, right? Still in the front of our necklace here. So all of this is still gonna be seen. I am gonna finish this with the chain and that part you don't necessarily see, but this will be part of the front of the design, okay? so. Definitely, definitely going to be uh, shown, not around the back of your neck. All right, we're going to get another piece of the bead stringing wire. Okay, and we're just going to repeat the exact same process. So we are going to thread on our crimp, thread on our wire guardian. Take the wire down through the wire guardian, but not back through the crimp just yet because we want to thread on our component so that our component just drops down into the wire guardian. Now, why do we use those wire guardians? I know a lot of you know why, but we always have new people and we always have beginners. And so to answer that question, it is to protect that wire from the metal, right, of this moving component. Uh, if the wire is touching that moving component over time, abrasion happens, it wears away that that nylon coating on the outside of your bead stringing wire and that can cause weakness which over time will, will make it break. So the wire guardian is in fact a real guard. It stands between your bead stringing wire and whatever hardware you happen to be using. All right, I'm gonna cut off the excess. Okay. And we're just gonna restring the exact same thing we did on the other side. So we're going to thread on a bead cap, a bead, a bead cap, another bead cap going in the opposite direction so that it's ready for the next bead, right? Bead cap to sit on top of that one. Drop those down and another bead cap, our last big bead, bead cap. And now we're gonna do our bicones and our birds, okay? So we're gonna do a bicone, a bird, <laughs> Wanda says they need people size wire guardians because she could use some protection from abrasion. Right? Same. Same. Oh, man. I feel that deep down in my soul. <laughs> oh, goodness. Monica says, where do you buy your crimp tubes? So I get my crimp tubes from Beetalon. Let me show you. I get them in these little containers. Um, I usually get the multi-pack so that I'll get a bunch of number two crimps in a, in different colors. So it'll be like a container of four. So it'll have the copper, the hematite color, silver and gold. And then that way I just have the little tubes. I can toss them to the side. And then 
if you want, like if you run out of one color, then you can repurchase just that color and then refill your little tube. So I always keep them in the little containers um, and just refill them as I, as I run out. But the first initial buy, I like to buy that four pack because it's, it's good to get them all, all in, in all of the metal colors all at once. All right. So we're going to crimp again. So we're threading on our crimp tube and our wire guardian. And I have an affiliate link with Beetle On if you would like to use it. You don't have to, but if you do, I do make a commission off of the sales that are made by using my affiliate link. And Nicole and Colleen always post that for you guys if you want to use it. Okay, so pull that down. And again, I want to be sure that I'm pulling out all the slack but that I also don't have those wires crisscrossing inside that tube. And we're going to crimp. Hold on. <laughs> this one's getting a little, it keeps wanting to twist on me. All right, there we go. And tidy it up. And we're going to trim off the excess. I do still happen to have a trash can handy, which is nice. All right. So there is the other side. Okay. So you can see kind of where we're going, right? We've, we're going to do three strands coming up to the single strands. And then we're going to have some copper chain to the back that'll go around your neck. Let's work on these three strands in the front. So our first strand, we are gonna use, remember these little baby beads? These really pretty blue little faceted round beads. We're gonna use some of those to create a drape that's gonna go on the first loop of our, our little component here. So some of it is already done and we're gonna put the rest of it together. Unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to pull up the picture and count because I can't remember how many beads. <laughs> I have to look at my picture of the design to see how many beads I used because some of these little beads are used in something else too. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so I used 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15. So we're going to add four to this strand and then we're going to attach it. So we're doing this with just eye pins. I'm just using some simple eye pins and simple loops for this. Okay. And we're just going to link them together. So there are no jump rings in between here. Does make a really beautiful, simple beaded chain. And it looks pretty all by itself as a bracelet. It looks pretty as a necklace that you can just layer with other things. But for our design, it's going to be the first uh, tier of our three strand design. So threading this on and grab my pliers. So we're not doing a wrapped loop since it's on a simple loop. We're going to do a simple loop on this side. So we're going to grab that wire and we're going to bend it right where it is exiting the bead. So we don't want to bend it over our pliers. Okay. I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and I'm going to trim off the excess wire, leaving myself about a fourth of an inch of wire to make my simple loop with. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers and I'm going to take the wire and roll it back to close up my loop. Okay, so we've got a little beaded connector, right? Because it's got a connection on both sides of it. So we're going to do that to three more. Lots of practice here because I'm only doing four for you guys, but you got to do a whole strand if you're going to recreate this design yourself, right? It would just take way too long for me to have done all 15 together for you all. All right, so roll back. Just want to be sure that you get those loops closed, as closed as you can possibly get them so that things don't sneak out, right? Uh, you don't want to leave a gap that is wide enough for your wire of your other beads that you're going to attach to it to sneak through. Okay. Okay. 
So this project incorporated stringing and now we're just doing simple loops. I love jewelry where you've got a little bit of everything going on. Um, so Nicole has a question from somebody that says, um, how do you decide on the length for each strand of your three layer necklace? So here's the thing. <laughs> I don't know for sure, but I tell you what, I usually do, if I do a multi-layer necklace, I don't work flat on a surface like I am with you guys. I work on the bust. It makes things so much easier. So what I would do, is I would start out with these strands and then I'd go ahead and put the chain on so that I can drape the chain around the back of the neck of a necklace bust. And then this is here, this will be hanging in the front. And then that way I can really kind of work um, on the bust to see where those drapes are going to lay, see how long they're going to be. But I will tell you, there is a, it's not necessarily a formula, but when you are measuring the, um, when you are measuring the length of a multi-strand design, okay, so like for instance, uh, if you're making a necklace that is 18 inches long, okay, that measurement is going to apply to the first layer of your necklace. So it'll be the top layer. So in other words, if you need to, if you're making a multi-strand design and you, you, you want to make it an 18 inch necklace, that 18 inches is going to be that first drape because that's the actual length of the entire necklace. The drapes are just a bonus, right? The extra drapes are just a bonus. If you've got a customer that says, I need an 18 inch necklace or I need a 22 inch necklace, but I want it to be a multi-strand design. The measurement that they give you, that's going to be the first, the first drape, the top drape, right? Because that's the length that you're going to measure for the entire length of the overall piece. Also, this is necessary when you're listing a product. So if you're going to be putting this, uh, a multi-strand design, um, on your website and you want to give the measurement of that design, that's the measurement that you're going to give. It's the inner diameter. So it includes that first drape, not the outer drapes. I see a lot of people sometimes will make the mistake of using the outer drape as the one for the measurement. And that's just not so. Um, that outer drape is just a bonus, right? It's just a focal it's not part of the actual measurement. Okay, so as far as creating, and I'll tell you about the distance between them here in just a second. I wanted to just kind of move on to this. So um, for creating this beaded chain, which is basically what we're doing, you just want to open and close those loops that you just created the same way that you open and close a jump ring. So you're going to uh, do it with a twist, right? You want to twist them open and then twist them back closed. You don't want to pull them apart because you'll never get that round shape again. So for instance, I'm holding it, holding the bead in my hand. I'm holding the loop with my pliers. I'm just going to twist to open that loop. I'm going to thread on the next bead and then I'm going to twist to close that back. Okay. So then I just move up, open, add the next one and then close, open, thread on the next one and then close. Okay. So you're going to do that with all of your beads. It makes a beautiful little beaded chain. This is great for a multi-strand necklace, but it's also great for just about anything. Well, this is Mary. It's from the future. <laughs> Mary, you're live, my friend. It's not a replay. You're actually here. <laughs> you really are here. <laughs> all right. So to connect this to, oh my gosh, sorry. I just dropped my phone. <laughs> I'm referring to the pictures here. I apologize. <laughs> so to connect this, you could connect it directly if you wanted to. I'm going to use a jump ring as my go between here. So I'm just going to use two little jump rings. Um, let's see here. Those will do. Uh, I'm just using some little four millimeter jump rings. Now remember that every time you add a jump ring to something, it's adding length. So you do have to take that into consideration. Uh, if you're going to decide between a four millimeter jump ring or a six millimeter, just remember that it, it always adds length to the design. So four millimeter doesn't add a whole lot of length and it, it they kind of just disappear into the overall design. So and this little jump ring is a little warped, but um, everything is packed. So we're going to use it. 
<laughs> he's a little, he's more of like an egg shape than an actual round jumper ring, but we're, we're using what we've got because I don't even know where I packed the copper jump rings, to be honest with you. I am going to tidy him up just a little bit with my pliers. It'll help. I would have just tossed that guy and grabbed another one, but that's just not possible right now. Okay, so there's our first strand, right? That's the first layer of our multi-strand design. Now, normally, when you're creating a multi-strand design, and I say normally, that's probably not, that's not normal for everybody, so I shouldn't say that. But for me, in particular, um, I like to set my, my drapes apart either by a half of an inch or an inch, um, unless I want it to be very, very dramatic, and then I'll go as far as an inch and a half between them. So you can actually lay them out straight like this and make your measurement. So your next, um, your next layer, you want to make it the length of this one and then add an inch to it. And that will make them hang about an inch apart. Same if you're going to use a half inch or whatever your measurement wants to be. Uh, I do find that they look better if they're a little bit further apart. Half an inch, I would only do if I were using tiny beads like this, right? And then I know that they're going to they're gonna look nice at a half inch increment. Um, but if I'm mixing it up, kind of like what I'm doing here, then I want those those different layers to be about an inch, maybe give or take a little bit apart. Okay. In the, in the way that they drape. So let me show you. I've got the little components, right. That I showed you. And I'm just connecting those together with four millimeter jump rings to create a chain. And that chain is going to be our second layer of our multi-strand design. So I have three more of these to add and we're just going to connect those with jump rings and then we're going to connect them. And then you'll see about how far apart these are going to work. Now, if you're working on a bead board, right, then you don't necessarily have to work on a, a necklace bust, a, a, a necklace board that has the little grooves in it. Um, is a great way to do multi-strand designs as well. It'll help you with the placement of those graduating lengths. So I'm just using a jump ring, just connecting the loops. Whoops, these are little jump rings, very small. Okay. <clears throat> so, so far we've shown that you can make a chain out of beads by beading, making a beaded chain, right? Or you can make a chain out of metal components by linking them together. So just because you don't have any chain doesn't mean you can't make a chain if you want one, right? And always, guys, if you don't have bargain bead box and you don't have these beads, that's okay. You can use this as inspiration to use your own stuff, right? Use your own stash to create fun projects like this. And hopefully I'm inspiring you to look at things like your metal components in a different way. Maybe you never considered turning them into a chain before. All right, so. Oh yeah, you could. So Beverly says you could put a bead between each one of those connectors. You absolutely could. Absolutely. All right. So now I'm just going to do a jump ring between those. Okay. And you can see, so there's about an inch. Once this is hanging, you'll, you'll get a better idea. That's why I like to do this on the bust because you get like the full drape effect. Um, but you can see there is about an inch between the strands and it, it's more noticeable uh, once we have it all hanging. I'm just gonna use two more little jump rings. Where is my other little jump ring? There it is. <laughs> I was like, oh no. This is not the day to lose anything in the carpet because I, I have no backup. <laughs> I have no backup. So jump ring onto the middle little loop here of our connector on one side. We're going to do the same on the other. Susan says she's gotten bargain bead box for the past three months and was never disappointed. I feel the exact same way. So let me tell you when it comes to bargain bead box, and this is true with Sam's boxes as well. 
I've never been disappointed. Have I gotten palettes, color palettes that I've struggled to work with? Yes, I have. But does that mean that I'm disappointed with the product itself or the box? Nope, not at all. It just means that my taste is different than everybody else's, right? And when I get a box of a palette, you know, a color combo that I'm not comfortable using, it just causes me to stretch myself creatively, right? To think outside the box and flex my design muscles. And, you know, being uncomfortable is where growth happens. And I, I hate that that is true. It is true in jewelry making. It's true in life. You have to be uncomfortable. Growth is not fun. I'm just saying. I'm living proof of that right now. <laughs> It is very uncomfortable to grow. Okay, so I'm going to slide this up just a little bit, and I'm going to show you what our last strand is going to be. Now, it's not finished, because so we're going to do part of it together, but I want to show you what it is. So remember those beautiful glass beads that we used in the top of this? So I want to use these as my bottom strand, and I'm going to connect those with jump rings, and then they have little dangles of more of those beautiful little blue beads in between them. That's going to be our bottom strand of our necklace. Now it doesn't look like much laying flat. You just got to trust me. Once it's all put together and hanging, you'll see it looks so, so beautiful. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put together the rest of the chain. We're going to do eye pins with our remaining three beads. And then we're going to make our little, our little dangles on some head pins. And then we're going to put it all together with some jump rings. Okay. So got a couple eye pins here. We're going to do simple loops on three. Um, do you keep leftover bargain bead box stuff together or do you incorporate it and, and separate them into the rest of your stash? That's a great question. Um, so for me personally, I will keep it together for a month or two. Um, I keep it all together. And then if I am, uh, if I'm, I'm in a design slump and I need some inspiration, I'll pull I'll pull out my leftovers from my bargain bead box. Uh, and usually that helps to jumpstart some creativity because the palette is already ready for me. And so it takes some of the guesswork out of what my next design is going to be. But I'll only keep it that way for a, a month or two. And then after that, if I haven't um, used it again, I will take it and incorporate the rest of the beads into my overall stash. So the answer to that is yes to both. Um, but I give myself a month or two, you know, just because sometimes you need that little extra ins inspiration. I do the same thing with Sam's boxes. So I'll keep a Sam's box leftovers in the box for, you know, two or three months, because if I need inspiration, I know I can pull it out and, and there's a already done color palette. And that usually helps to, to inspire me to use some of my other beads too. All right, so just simple loops on these. I will, Prudence. Prudence wants me to give a tour of my new, my new studio setup. I definitely will do that when I get settled for sure, because it's going to be way different. It's going to be so different than this, this room. I've had to downsize quite a bit and uh, make use of storage. And I haven't actually done it, but I mean, you know. <laughs> I am gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I have a plan. I have a plan. All right. So we're going to make our little dangles. We're just using head pins. We're going to thread on two of the little faceted rounds and we're going to just do a simple loop. So I'm going to bend the wire right where it is exiting the bead, coming in with my cutter tool, leaving myself about a fourth of an inch and then using my round nose pliers. Oh, you'd like to see me doing it from scratch, says Wanda. I don't know about all that. I feel like there's going to be a lot of sentence enhancers and a lot of frustration because I am working in such a small, I'm going from an entire room to half of a room. So I do have to downsize um, as far as studio space is concerned, but I feel like creatively it's actually going to be a blessing because it's going to keep everything close to me so I don't have to wander around to find what I need. <laughs> that can only be a good thing, right? All right, so I've got one more of these to make and then we're gonna finish off this chain and we're gonna attach it to the rest of our necklace. 
and then we'll finish off the length. All right, so last one here. There's our loop for that, okay? All right, so each one of these is connected by a six millimeter jump ring and they have the little dangle on them. So when I'm putting this together, I need to be really, really careful that all of my dangles are, are all hanging from the same bottom. Does that make sense? I don't want to connect a, a dangle that's going to be going the, the opposite direction of all the rest of them. So I need to be very, very mindful of that. The best way to do that is to lay it flat. Okay, so I'm going to move this out of the way for now. And we're going to work on the bead mat here. And that just helps to make sure that everything is all traveling in the same, in the same way. All right, so this one's got a jump ring on it already. I'm going to open this jump ring up. I have to twist it around to get the opening. Okay, so I'm going to open this jump ring. I'm going to thread on my dangle. And then I'm going to thread on my loop for my next bead and close that back. Okay, and then just kind of slide down. We're going to open up our next jump ring. Oh, wow. Patty, I love that idea. Patty says you can make a video in double time of organizing and voice over what you're doing. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I found my, um, my camcorder, so I technically could do that. All right, so I'm threading on my next jump ring, making sure that it's going in the same direction. So not only the dangles, but the jump rings, they need to be going in the same direction as well so that everything hangs correctly. Hold that in place, thread on the dangle, thread on the next bead, and then close. So in other words, you don't want to go putting this little beaded chain together all willy-nilly because if your jump rings and your little dangles are going in opposite directions, nothing is going to hang nice and uniform. It's going to be a twisted mess, and I want all those dangles to all hang in the same direction. So next jump ring, hold that in place. Thread on your dangle, thread on your next bead, and then close. Okay, we've got one more. We have two more actually. Open that up. I'm gonna thread that on, hold the bead, and then the next bead, and close. Slide down. And this is our last, so open, thread that on, thread that on. I have a random question that is so not jewelry related. Does any, do any of you guys watch uh, When Calls the Heart? <laughs> Did any of you think that the preview for the upcoming episode was way more dramatic than what it actually was? Like, I hate it when shows do that. Like, you think it's going to be some big, dramatic, awful, something has happened and it's so bad. Oh, my gosh. And then you watch it and you're like, why? Why did you, why did you mess with my emotions that way? Don't do that. That's not cool. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I've got some people out there. <laughs> Some of my YouTube people are like, as I do, I do. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one. Okay, so I'm going to double check my picture again because, uh, yeah. So for this one, for this strand, I used two jump rings uh, to make up the difference. So I only had a certain amount of these beads, right? Because Bargain Bead Box only sent me a certain amount of beads. So in order to make my strand hang at the length that I wanted it to, so that it was for far enough, from the other two strands, I had to utilize my jump rings. So instead of just using one jump ring to connect it here, I used two just to add that extra little bit of length. That's why I always say jump rings add length. And sometimes that can be a bad thing. Sometimes that can be a good thing. For this this project, um, it, it was a, a necessity to have the extra length. So it was definitely a good thing here. So I'm going to close that back. So I've got two jump rings here. All right, 
I'm gonna open that up, thread that on, close it back. <laughs> Maria says she watched, but not since season four. She won't watch till she can, she can script or she can catch up and, you know, and binge it. Let's see. Uh, Brooke says that preview was, and I'm not saying that word on a live, but I agree with you, my friend. Brooke, that preview was just like, don't mess with your viewers. They're going to show up no matter what. You don't have to do that. <laughs> oh, if you know, you know. Right? Patty says, what about when movie trailers have the only good scenes and then you're deflated after watching the movie? I, I hate that. I hate that. Beverly says we need a Sarah Lovecraft reality show, moving, organizing, and beating. I'm going to be like the next, what's her name? You know, the girl who, if it sparks joy, Marie Kondo, I'm going to be the next Marie Kondo, but for, for beating, right? <laughs> All right. So I have all this. It looks like a hot mess laying here flat. You're going to see the big reveal here in just a second. Okay. But first we got to do, we got to do the length. So I took the chain that was included in my bargain bead box and I doubled it. Um, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. I just thought that it was cool. It added a little extra texture. So I took the chain, I cut it in half, and I doubled it with a jump ring. I'm using one of the toggles that was included, okay? And so I'm gonna need a loop over here to attach my toggle ring. So my clasp is gonna be sort of in the front. You don't have to do it that way if you don't want to. It's just an idea. So jump ring, loop, or ring rather. Close that back. Toggle is going to go through there. Our chain is going to go all the way around. And then I brought the two pieces of chain together with another jump ring. I do want to straighten these out before I attach it to the end. Hold on. I'm going to actually hold it up in the air. I know that doesn't do you any good. I'm just trying to make sure that it's not, it's not twisted when I go to open this jump ring and attach it. So uh, I had already put a jump ring on this end and I'm just gonna attach it to my wire guardian on the other side. Okay, so I know that this looks like a mess. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn you around now so we can see what this looks like. Yeah, Peggy says watermelon. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I turn you around, okay. So we're gonna, ooh hiding in here is so so weird all right I actually broke my uh studio lights Kathy was here when that happened <laughs> and I didn't just break it once I broke it twice all right so I'm gonna put this on the bus I'm actually gonna double the chain over just so that because this is kind of a long necklace tidy it up a little bit Okay. All right. So now you can see if I can hold it up. Well, if I could make it even, that would also be helpful. Hold on. <laughs> Just doesn't do any good if you don't actually see it the way that it's intended. All right. So this is our, this is our project. Okay. So you can see now you really get the, um, the full effect of the inch between each one of the strands. So they're evenly placed, right? They're evenly placed. You can see how they connect things like jump rings, things like um, uh, the crimp tubes, those all disappear, right? They all disappear into the design. So your hardware, that shouldn't be part of the design unless it's intentional. The rest of it should just disappear. So like the little jump rings that are holding that middle strand, that middle chain together, you never see any of that, right? You don't ever notice any of that. The jump rings that are holding things together here, you never notice those things. Your crimp covers uh, or your crimp tubes where people insist on putting crimp covers on, I don't, I don't, because they disappear. 
right? They disappear. It's not necessary. If you put a crimp cover over it, all of a sudden it becomes part of the design because you turned it into a bead. So always think about that when you are, when you're putting something together. Now, let me show you where you can take this to the next level. So included in this bargain bead box, and I showed you a little while ago was this pendant, right? This beautiful flying bird pendant. I took some extra chain and just thread that on, right? I didn't do anything. I didn't bead around it or anything. I just put that on there and I'm gonna add this as an a, additional layer. And the reason I didn't attach it to the entire piece is so that it can be added or removed. Cause some days you might not feel like you need all that extra, but if you want extra, you can have the pendant piece too, right? which I think just takes it to a whole other level. Now you could keep going just because it's three strands and there are only three loops. Doesn't mean that you can't hang more than one strand from each one of those loops. So technically if you wanted to turn this into a six strand necklace, a 12 strand necklace, you could do that with these same components. You don't have to go out and try to find like a 12 to one component. A lot of times those are impossible to find. Um, so you can just make adjustments with the pieces that you have by adding more than one strand to each one of those little loops, right? So there you go. And you guys know, because I showed you at the beginning, how many beads I had left over, right? I had that entire thing of bargain bead box beads left over. This was just a handful of those. So you know that with them, it absolutely is a bargain because I created this and I still have enough to make several other pieces of jewelry and their boxes are priced at under $20. You can't beat that. Even if you get one that is in a color palette you hate, you, you still can't beat it. I'm just saying. And you can put together fabulous showstoppers. And that's what this one is. I can't even decide if I want to put this one in the Etsy shop or not. I'm feeling like this is just mine. Like it's, it's, I think I just made this one for myself and decided to share it with you all. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to pack it away and make that decision after I move. But I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope that you are inspired. I hope that, um, you know, that we've talked through. Our, our techniques were super easy today. We just did some stringing. We just did some simple loops. But we did kind of talk through multi-strand and how to space those out um, and things like that and using jump rings to um, your benefit or your detriment, you know, depending on what the circumstances are. You can always switch out a larger one for a smaller one or vice versa. So I hope I've inspired you. I hope that um, you guys have enjoyed today's live and that you like the project. I think it turned out really cool. So I was excited to show it to you. All right, my friends. Oh, this is so, it's such sweet. Parting is such sweet sorrow because on one hand, I'm excited to move. On the other hand, it's going to be, it's really difficult for me to be away. It really is hard for me to be away, to not plan a live, to not be like working. So um, just know that I am missing you guys very, very much over the next week or two as I am moving and getting settled so that we can get back together and put together amazing stuff. I have no doubt in my mind that this move, this change for me is going to be nothing but beneficial to my creative journey. So I'm really looking forward to, I'm going to be living like on the side of a mountain, like literally there's a mountain and there's a lake on the other side that being out in the middle of nowhere feeling because it's really not out in the middle of nowhere but i think it's going to do wonders for me getting out of this neighborhood with neighbors and that whole i just i just know that this is only good things could i mean bad things could happen of course but i feel like creatively this is definitely the change that i needed and i cannot wait to see um how that comes out in my designs and my kits and the things that we do together. So I'm looking forward and um, and very optimistic about it. And I will miss you guys, but I'll be back, right? So if you are a hardwired member, I will see you at 4.30 p.m. today with our project. Um, if not, I will see you guys back here, April 5th, 1 p.m., same time, just a couple of, couple of weeks away, okay? I love you guys. So, so much. Thank you for joining me. Have a good time while I'm gone. Keep posting your pictures and I'll see you guys again soon. Okay. I love you. Bye.